Canva, the drag and drop online design platform is worth $26 billion and has beaten Microsoft and Adobe, the two tech giants at their own game. Started by a student with no money, who is now dominating the AI industry and collaborating with companies like FedEx and Samsung. Let's see first how Canva started. Then let's explore how they beaten Microsoft and Adobe. And lastly, let's look what we can learn about this story. Melanie Perkins had entrepreneurship in her heart from childhood. When she was 14, she sold handmade scarves in supermarket in the city of Perth. In 2006, when she was 19 and went to university, Melanie wanted to make some extra money. What is the best way to make extra money as a student? Tutoring. She tutored other people in design programs. Melanie realized that the programs are hard and complicated and that design should not be that complicated. The programs were so complicated that students needed months just to learn the basics. Melanie was 19. She had no knowledge in coding or anything tech related. Also, she was a student, so she didn't have much money. And maybe the most important thing, she needed to go to battle against Microsoft and Adobe for what she was 100% not ready for. But she got willpower and passion and a mission to make the world a better place. So she started small. She saw a gap in the Australian high school market and decided to start a business named Fusion Books. The idea was a yearbook business, online templates and simple to use. Schools would use it for free, Melanie would print them and the schools would pay for commission. This gave her the courage to start her own dream design platform. But that wasn't easy. She made some money with Fusion Books, but nowhere near what she needed. Melanie needed investors. First, she went to friends and family and got $50,000. But that's nowhere near money to take on against Microsoft and Adobe. Melanie needed some investors with full pockets. There was a startup competition in her town, and a celebrity investor was there to judge the competition. Melanie managed to get five minutes with him to tell him about her idea. That investor was Bill Tai. Bill was one of the first investors in Zoom. He liked the idea and invited her to lunch in San Francisco, Silicon Valley. This was her presentation. Of course, it was bad. Bill wasn't impressed. But Melanie didn't give up. Her brother was in San Francisco and Melanie slept on his couch for three months trying to find investors. Bill asked Lars Rasmussen, the inventor of Google Maps, to invest. Bill said to Melanie if Lars would invest, he would invest too. She heard no more than 100 times and had a hard time finding investors because they were based in Australia, not San Francisco. But everything would change in 2012. Bill Tai invited Melanie to a kitesurfing event where he led a conference with tons of investors. She didn't know how to kitesurf, but she learned and impressed everybody. Melanie told her idea to investors and most of them were interested and invested. By the end of 2013, Canva raised $1.6 million from Ty, Rasmussen, Blackbeard, Matrix, and Interwest partners. But this was only the beginning. The real challenge would start now. Melanie's dream was an online design tool that anyone could use, and to make a complicated skill be drag and drop. They gathered an audience of freelancers, startups, non-profit organizations, and institutions. They had more than 75,000 users within the first year. Canva operates as a software as a service business model. They use a freemium model to market, attract, and convert leads. Their audience is people who aren't professional designers, people who don't have time and passion to learn complex programs, and people who don't have money to hire someone. Canva makes money in few ways. First is subscriptions. Canva has three types of subscription. Canva Free, this is a free version for personal needs, where you get over 1 million design templates, 3 million of free images and graphics, and 5 gigabytes of cloud storage. Next is Canva Pro, which is $15 per month, where you have unlimited templates, over 100 million images and graphics, videos and audios, remove background in a click, 20 plus AI tools, and 1 terabyte of storage. The last one is Canva Teams, $30 per month, and minimum free persons, where you get everything from Canva Pro, but you can publish to social media from Canva, built-in workflows, unlimited storage, and 24-7 support. The other two ways Canva makes money is Marketplace and Design School. 
In the marketplace, you can buy images, templates, etc. made by other people. Canva takes 30% of the commission for every design sold. In design school, Canva offers online classes about design, branding, etc. hosted by Canva's experts. Some are free and some start from $5. Canva's cost is in software development, administration, marketing, infrastructure, maintenance, personnel, and affiliates. All this managed to get Canva a revenue of $1.7 billion in 2023, an evaluation of $26 billion. But that's not all. They heavily invest and also acquire new companies. In 2021, they acquired Kaleido, a visual AI company which gave Canva background removal tool, in 2021, they introduced text-to-image tool and introduced a full suite of AI-powered tools called Magic Studio in 2023. They saw a 40% increase in monthly users using AI tools. They acquired Affinity, an award-winning software for professional photo editing, illustration, and graphic design. Excels and Pixabay, two go-to-free stock image and video platforms are owned by Canva. Their latest purchase was Leonardo AI, famous and popular AI image creator tool. With all this information in mind, we can ask the question, what does the future of Canva look like? The future looks bright. They made partnerships with FedEx, Samsung, Office Depot, HubSpot, Wattpad, and many, many more. Yes, FedEx uses Canva to increase your delivery experience. Canva disclosed that their user base includes workers at more than 90% of Fortune 500 companies. Currently, they are planning to target Hollywood and big business users. What about their competitors? Can they overtake them and destroy them? Canva's competitors are few. Lucidpress, Vengeek, Fodor, Prezi, Adobe InDesign, Adobe Lightroom, Kim, but none of them come close to Canva. Melanie Perkins, once a broke student with a big dream, is now one of the most important women in the tech industry. Her dream was big, but her dedication, persistence, and will was bigger. Without these attributions, I'm sure there wouldn't be Canva. And I'm sure Canva wouldn't be able to be worth that much and beat Microsoft and Adobe.